Welcome back. Hey, it worked. <laughs> to more medical, our weekly live stream. My name is Dr. Rock. That spelled R A K, pronounced R O C K. And I'm here with Dr. Lori. Dr. Lori, right here. Nice to meet you. Nice well, I know you, Rock, but I'm everyone. Nice to see you. <laughs> yeah. Nice to see everyone out there. And exactly. um, love, yeah, we love this time. We we're here to answer questions. We also try to bring a little topic. But first, I wanted Dr. Lori. You want to just tell um, people who may not uh, know about Mora what we do and a little bit about our mission. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, thank you. Um, so I'm Dr. Lori Marbus. I'm the chief medical officer and Dr. Rock Jot Watney is one of our most amazing physicians. And um, we had spoken earlier this morning just saying how lovely it is to be able to practice lifestyle medicine. So that's really what we do. And hey, Christina, nice to see you. Um, <laughs> Christina uh, Lascana is one of our amazing PAs. And um, so basically what we do is we really focus in on helping you treat the root cause. And we're really looking at weight loss and diabetes and some of the other chronic diseases that come with that, that kind of all treated at once. And we run group medical visits. We accept insurance in states like Texas, Florida, California, Ohio, New York, we're working on Colorado. And we're really seeing some amazing stuff. But the cool thing is, like I said, we accept your insurance, including Medicare, Medicaid, uh, the Aetna's, the Humana's, the Blue Cross Blue Shields of the world. And it's really fun. So we're seeing patients engage and do well. Um, and our team is just phenomenal. And yeah, it's good. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Christina, welcome. Thanks for joining yes, thank us. You. Yes. People were getting just bored of Lori and Dr. Lori. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Tell us, just go ahead and introduce yourself. Um, and and share share a, a little bit about you. Yeah, so I'm Christina. I'm one of our PAs here at Mora Medical. So um, I went to um, Ash Wednesday Mass this morning. So that's what this smudge on my forehead mm. is. If you were wondering, <laughs> thought I mentioned that. But I um, am a PA that lives in Texas um, and just really passionate about helping people to improve their lives and quality of life and their health. Um, and so, yeah, I'm just really happy to be here and answer questions with Dr. Rock and Dr. Lori today. Yeah, welcome. Thanks for being here. Mm -hmm. And please, if you have questions, share them in the chat. Mm -hmm. Any thoughts, comments? We love when you share. And um, today I thought we'd talk, uh, Dr. Lori and I were actually talking about this, um, is just our, our mindset about movement. And actually, I'll start the movement versus exercise, you know? Like um, when we think of exercise, well, what I, I'll, I'll stop, I'll stop there. I want to hear you, your guys' thoughts. Go ahead, Christina. I am sharing our group. That's the other prompt I just want to add. If you could share this live stream to your Facebook live or to whoever our Facebook feed or who, wherever you'd like, please do. That would it really helps us spread the word and we can answer more right. questions, but please feel free to ask any questions that you have in the, in the chat and we will see it. So thank you. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Christina, well, I'll start with that. Like tell, tell, tell us a little bit about how you look at movement in your life. Yeah, that's a good question. I think um, for many years, like, you know, we're in sports and different things and it's fun. Right. But then we get to a point in our lives when we feel like we have to exercise and we have to, mm -hmm. you know, go to the gym and lift weights or, you know, even if that's not something that we know how to do and, there's a lot of pressure to exercise. We hear that in society, right? Um, and so for me, um, I've learned over the past few years that movement and trying to find movement that I really find joy in has been much, much better for me. My It helps my mental health to be, get out That's and right. go for a long walk and not feel like I have to, you know, necessarily go for a, a, a run and be monitoring my time, like be really pressured to get a good time. If I can just go for a walk and I get really good exercise that way and I enjoy it, I can go with a loved one or a friend, talk to a friend on the phone. And that brings me a lot of joy. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's a movement that I really like to do. Also, um, I've found other movements that I really like, like I do um, um, <clears throat> bar blend kind of workouts and things where there's some dance to it. And that brings mm. me a lot of joy as well. Mm. So really, I think the key is like finding activities that bring you joy, 
because that's what's helped me to kind of stick to an activity that I like and to keep my body moving um, in a way that feels good. And then also that keeps me strong, keeps my cardiovascular health, you know, in good shape. And then also, um, you know, brings me some joy. So I would say that's a big difference between like movement and activity versus just exercise, which mm. a lot of times feels like a, a lot of pressure around exercise. Yeah, Christina, you said something really interesting. You said when we're younger um, and we do sports and stuff, and it, it also reminded me of, I have small kids, like how movement for them is fun. It's, it's, it's just naturally fun. Like that's, mm -hmm. and at a certain age, it becomes exercise. It becomes yes. something we should do that's good for us. Yeah. I'm not denying that. It's one of the kind of health, most powerful medicines, but our mindset around it. Dr. Lori, you have any thoughts? Um, just that the, the mindset I've been locked because I've been sharing to too many, <laughs> too many <laughs> fake groups. Um, so yeah, the, the mindset around exercise is really key. And I've been, like I said, that self-talk piece is really motivating because what you'll find yourself is that as you start listening to either other people or to yourself or making that really mindful decision to make a difference in how you speak to yourself when it gets really tough and it's easy just to walk away. Like, ah, oh, I'm too hard. You're like, actually, no, I'm the person who keeps going. I'm a person who can overcome any of these obstacles. So yeah, that that's really, really important. And um, yeah, it's, it's a beautiful thing when you can be your own self coach. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. I love that. You're coaching yourself. Mm -hmm. I, I also want to bring it back to Christina, what you said, you said, like you found activities that you really enjoy. They put a smile on your face. It feel good. You said that um, dancing kind of makes you feel that way. And a lot of times people look at exercise and just like you said, that I have to go for a run. I have to go to the gym. And if that doesn't bring you joy, if that doesn't feel good, then guess what? you're going to look for every excuse not to go. It's going to feel, I don't know if you guys are familiar with this woman, Michelle Seeger. She's, um, she studies uh, exercise. She studies like motivation and why we do healthy behaviors. But a lot of her research or previous research was on exercise and what motivates people to exercise. And wh what I love is the framework she has, which is, you know, people who don't exercise, they often look at it like this, like a chore, like something that's good for you and something I should be doing. And the ones that exercise regularly, Christine, I heard it clearly when you were talking, it makes you feel good. It brings you joy. It gives you energy. And that's not as Dr. Seeger says, she says, that's not a chore. That's a gift. And like a gift is something you want to keep giving to yourself. So, um, so usually when I'm talking to people, I, I, I first get a sense, like, are they looking at it as a chore or a gift? Because if they're not exercising 99 times out of 100, they're looking at it as a chore. And you can often get them to connect to a moment in their life, a past, where it wasn't a chore. And once they start doing that, remembering how good they felt, how it help them, like you're saying, Dr. Lori, shape their identity of the person that they were, feeling strong, feeling capable. It's, it changes the, you know, mindset is, I think, the key, as, as we've been saying these last few live streams, like, you can't, it's hard to change your behavior when you, when you don't have the right mindset. Oh, yeah, that mindset piece <clears throat> is huge. I know Dr. Marvis has talked to us about the that um, about mindset before and I've been listening to um, this book and it talks about what you mentioned like I am a person that exercises right like an example for me is that I'm a tall person and so I end up I, I end up like when I'm around people kind of slouching I slouch mm. and so that was something that I've been always I'm like oh I'm slouching again like I, I'm hard on myself when I find myself mm. slouching so just in the last couple of weeks I'm saying I'm a person that has good posture. And that's just an example. But I have noticed that in the last few weeks, my posture has significantly improved. Mm -hmm. um, I was having some neck pain because I think I was like slouching too much and my neck <laughs> pain better. And so, I mean, that's just a little example of how, you know, just that little tiny difference 
instead of saying, oh, gosh, I'm upset that I'm slouching again. Gosh, I'm always slouching. Changing that to, you know what? I'm noticing that I'm slouching. I'm a person that has good posture. Mm -hmm. So why am I slouching? I'm going to sit up. And it's just a tiny little thing. It's made a big difference. And so that's that's just, you can do the same thing with anything in in your life. And movement's a great example of, of something you can do that with. Yeah. And it kind of goes back. There was an interesting study showing that those people who are successful at stopping smoking, which is one of the hardest habits to break, is the difference was was how they spoke to themselves and how they saw themselves. So it's um, either, you know, I've stopped smoking and, I'm, you know, I'm still working on it. People are like, it could be the same day they stop, right? Two different people. But the other person, you ask them if, if they were a smoker, they're like, I'm not a smoker. I, and they, even though they quit maybe 24 hours, they, they believe they've self-determined, they've created a self-identity that they are no longer a smoker. And those are the people who are the most successful because they've now have not identified as a smoker, even though maybe 24 hours ago they were versus those who allow themselves to struggle. But you saying I'm a person with good posture, it's not you beating yourself up anymore. It's just like, oh, I'm a person with good posture here. I'm going to correct this here. I am a person with good posture. I am a runner. I am a person who lifts weights. I am someone who moves every day. Um, I am whatever. It doesn't matter. Uh, Whatever works for you. Great. Okay. Um, Any questions? Let's see. What do we have in the chat right now? Um, Stuart said, uh, hi, Dr. Marvis. Hope you're doing well. I've been sending people your way. Thank you, Stuart. That's awesome. Thank you, Stuart. And Chastity is here on YouTube as well. Hi, Chastity. It's nice to see you. Um, what are your, uh, Dr. Lori, what do you do for movement on a, on a regular basis? I'm definitely, a wa- I love walking. Um, I'll run probably three or four times a week. Um, running just makes me feel younger. <laughs> like I can just, that movement <laughs> and the speed of going downhill is mm. really fun. Um And uh, done more walking because the dog is not a good runner dog. She likes to stop and move and, you know, like a, it's like a waddling duck, you know, it's like stops and smell. We go on sniff afaris. They're not much of a a walk afari, but (laughs) Um, the other thing is for me is really focusing in. And I've done this off and on more uh, intensely in the past is weight training. Um, So right now I'm, and I've done it before and I love it. It's uh, kettlebells, right? And it's called simple mm. and sinister. Oh yeah. And so what it is, it's too simple. Actually, I'm a big fan of simplicity because if per- I can make perfect it simple. T- perfect name for you. <laughs> it's like, right. And so who knew you get so excited over these things? Um, it's really, it's, it's a matter. It's written by the guy that actually introduced kettlebells. Pavlov, I believe something i can't remember his name i can't remember his name at the top of my head but anyway it's um he's got some really funny videos on youtube or netflix about it that's how we discovered it but it's on amazon you can order it it's called simple and sinister it's very it is simple and sinister because basically you're doing one arm swings you want to do 100 of those 50 on each side every day and then with that the second exercise is a turkish get up and do a total of 10 five on each side and I will tell you, your heart rate will go up, especially as you increase the weight. So a Turkish get up is basically where you lay supinely flat on the floor, right? And you have a weight um, above you. So like if I'm laying on the floor, it's straight a- ahead up on top. And I'm looking at this and look at the weight. You keep your arm um, perpendicular to the ceiling as you get up. And so, you know, you bend your, your leg, same arm, and you maneuver up and you get up and then you put yourself down. And I will tell you, my goal is like 35 pounds. I'm only at like 10 pounds right now, but it is, it's a, it's a good one. And then as you swing, he has, you know, charts on like what a considered a strong woman is. And I'm like, I'm going to get that, but it's really helpful because it you're really, and there's a warm up that does like a goblet squat. And so you're squatting, which is good, which none of us do. There's a, Another, there's three warm ups exercises, and one is taking the kettlebell and rotating it around, mm. which is great. Opens up your shoulders. There's some lifting there. With the goblet squat, you can do some bicep curls while you're down there. And then the other one is, you know, where you're <clears throat> a bridge and not a bridge, but a what they call it, the uh, where you're laying down and you lift up your butt and down. Yeah. Uh, yeah, bridge, glute bridge. Bridge, a glute bridge. That's what it was, a yeah. glute bridge. Not the bridge like going backwards, but. Um, but yeah, so 
Honestly, I find it fun just challenging because there's a really interesting setting saying that for middle-aged people like myself, uh, if you can get up off the floor without using your hands um, mm. or any extra help that you have increased longevity. So now it's my goal <laughs> to see and do that every single day, right? Is like, just get up and down, not using my hands, finding new ways, new, new strategies, working on flexibility. Cause that there that definitely changes. You got, and you have to work harder. That's one thing I've noticed is entering into my fifties is you have to work harder to maintain what you took for granted when you were younger. So this other side of the hill, the old age hill is, is unique, but I'm taking it as a challenge to prove that anyone of any age can do it. And I'm work, I do, I'm working on my pull-ups. I do like to mm. do that too. So yeah, that's what I do. Cause mm. it's, it's just, I, I, and do you, ske yeah. do you schedule specific times? Yeah, no? definitely. Uh, scheduling is really important piece because if I don't, by the end of the day, one, you're too tired or other things have stacked into your day and it makes it very difficult to, to maintain uh, a regular habit. So morning times um, is a big one. I There's a nice trail here that I'll run if the weather's bad, which, you know, if it's raining or something, there's a gym that we belong to that I can use. Used to have my own treadmill. Um, we left Colorado. I, I left it there. Um, but yeah, absolutely. First thing in the morning is best. I think for myself, others may find other times of the day work better, middle of the day, um, especially if it gets warmer, whether it gets hot, I think yeah. the mornings work better and you just feel like you've accomplished something. It puts you in a better mood. Exercise helps with the mood. You're going to handle stress better. You'll sleep better. Mm -hmm. Um, your blood sugars will be better if you're diabetic. Uh, yeah. Lots of so good that, stuff. That, that is, that is why it's important to be intentional about thinking about when you'll do it because mm -hmm. you're just like you're saying so many things can happen. Your day can, can just get out of control and it often happens and so I tell patients, I give, I do this myself and I give this advice is you should put it on your calendar. If you use a mm -hmm. calendar for any sort of like keeping track of appointments and things like that and treat it like any other appointment. If I had a doctor's appointment, if I have a phone call set up with someone and now I have an appointment with myself to take care of myself. Perfect. And and it's not, you know, it's, it goes back to like, is it a chore on my calendar or is it a gift on my calendar? Actually, it, it does all those things that you're saying. It makes me feel good. It gives me more energy. <laughs> and so being intentional about it is not just um, like, oh, I'm making sure I have time to do this chore. It's I, I'm making sure I get to do it right? because otherwise I won't feel as good as I would have if right. I didn't do it. Exactly. Uh, giving yourself permission to give yourself time to take care of yourself and not feel guilty about it. Right. <laughs> so reframing it to like, I need to do this in order to do the things that I, I need to do for other people. That helps me. Um, uh, Cause we all, I don't know for at least as a mom and a mom, and the, well, not that the children are home anymore, but the, just as a wife and a mother, you, we all as women, I think we struggle with that piece that we're sacrificing and I'm sure men do too, but I don't know. I've never been a man <laughs> to understand, but I know it's a very common mindset for women to just put themselves yeah. at the bottom of the totem pole when they really should. Well, maybe we, the bottom of the totem pole, at least for the beginning of the day, but we really should hold ourselves um, at a higher value um, that taking care of ourselves is not being selfish. It's doing the right thing. So one, you can take better care of others, but also as you get older and age, life gets easier for you in the sense of you're not going to struggle with the, the things that yeah. a lot of maybe our friends and family members have. And um, that is, that's another thing is it's an investment. Your future self in 10 or 20 years will look back on this day and say, thank you for doing that. I know it's hard to see that, but you really are just helping your future self. If you can think of it as another person, maybe that'll be helpful. Um, but yeah. 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 <laughs> Um, let's see. Linda says those Turkish get-ups are hard. My past hard. trainer had us do the. They are hard. I actually, I I used to do them at my previous gym, and you're inspiring. I have a few kettlebells in my garage. Now I work out in my garage, so. Yep. Uh, you're inspiring me to add those back in. They're good, dude. Man, they are every yeah. every yes. every body muscle. every muscles involved. <laughs> yeah, and the level of control you need. Yeah. yeah, and balance the level of control you need. Your core, your your. Your entire body basically yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. there's coordination and then okay and then the inspiring. heavier they get i mean 
I, so I have a 35 kilo, 35 pound kettlebell and I'm just lifting. I mean, I can lift fairly easily, you know, 40, 50 pounds with two hands, but that one hand and thinking, I was thinking to myself, this is my cool. The trick is no oh. good. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be pretty Minister. fun. Oh, it's so sinister. It's so simple, but sinister. <laughs> oh, it's brilliant name. Yeah, I was like, right. whoever did that was fantastic. So, Christina, do you do any um, anything else that you besides what you mentioned? Yeah, I mean, I do um, some weight training as well. So that that helps me to feel strong um, and. And that help, yeah, it just makes me feel good. Most of what I do though is from home. I don't have a gym that I go to. Um, I use the ab beach bodies. I don't know uh, if anyone's ever used that before, but there's so many great exercises on there. Tony Horton, Tony Horton, yeah. right? Yeah, there's yeah. quite a few different, like there's so many different options now on there. Yeah. Like there's Pilates, there's yoga, mm -hmm. there's weight training. Um, so that's what I like. And it's only, it's fairly inexpensive, a lot less than a gym. So it works for my husband and I, um, we both can use it from home. Um, and it's easy for me to be able to just do it from my home and not have to drive to the gym. Um, right. But everybody's different. I know like for, for some people who like, don't like working out by themselves. So if that's you and you don't like to work out by yourself, then maybe finding a, a gym to go to where there's going to be other people that you can meet or going to a workout class, because that's sometimes really motivating for people. I've had patients before hate working out by themselves, but then once they get, start going to like a spin class or a, a yoga class or whatever class they might be interested in, it helps them to like be around other people and they love that environment and that community. And, and so I think Absolutely. it's important to look back, look into like what works for you and it, what works for us may not work for you and kind of experiment too I, and what you like. I think what you're getting at, Christina, I love that point is that you should think about the activity or the movement you're going to do. And you should think about how you can elevate that experience. You know, whether it's like, I often will talk to patients about walking and they can, and I do this, you can listen to a podcast, you can mm -hmm. listen to an audio book, yep. you can make a phone call, you can schedule it with someone else. You know, mm -hmm. and and that com that connection is what and it gives accountability as well. Mm -hmm. So I think many people and for years I, I I went to a gym. I know like that sense of community you get just being around other people who have similar goals and and just being in an environment where you can like connect with people. It doesn't even matter. You're not talking about fitness all the time. You're right. talking about your life and like maybe some show that somebody's watching. It doesn't matter. It's just um, elevating the experience. Right. Yeah, I know like for uh, a lot of people having like a, if you like to walk, having a walking partner can be really great. That's right. And um, especially somebody that maybe lives in your neighborhood that close by, <laughs> you guys can just meet on three days a week and you walk together. Um, that's something that my mom has done over the years and it's yeah. helped her a lot. Um, my husband and I usually walk most nights after dinner. So that's like our kind of time. And I would say if anybody doesn't do that with their spouse, I would highly recommend it because it is like the time when we have the best conversations. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like there's just something about walking that can really help you kind of think clearly. There's not other distractions. You're not worried about the laundry. You're not worried about, you know, the dishes and you can just really focus on that person you're with so the same thing with like calling a friend it's a really good time to do that mm -hmm. um yeah podcasts it's, i listen to podcasts too when i walk or audiobooks so yeah that's finding something that brings you joy yeah. and that you can do or with. or 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 big meetings that like yeah. you're not necessarily going to be talking and you're yeah. just required to attend and listen mm -hmm. um or maybe you are talking and you're just like, you know what, I'm taking a walk team and yeah, and I'm gonna I'm gonna be listening and present and moving my body uh, outside. Which I almost think makes you more attentive, right? Because they do say yes. your brain absorbs more and does more as you're exercising. Um, yeah, walking with your spouse is really cool. The other thing is I call the kids, you know, because they're all in different places. Mm. Um, and Emily's like, oh, we out for your walk because that's just <laughs> she's like, this is what I do. Right. Um, I was like, yep. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's a great time to, to catch up. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's walking is something that we all if we're blessed 
not having to have any um, health issues that are preventing that, you know, walking is an easy thing and it can get harder and you by just by walking a little faster or walking up a hill. Um, so you can make it, engage it, and you can do it anywhere you go. Um, literally, you could be in the middle of your living room, walking in place as yeah. you're watching television. Um, you can <coughs> do all sorts of things. So, um, yeah. And that brings up a good point, too. I mean, there's people that can't walk, right? There's people that mm -hmm. can't lift certain weights with their arms or, you know, whatever. There's people with um, you know, disabilities and things. So there's always, I would just say that there's always some type of movement that the majority of us can do. And so, you know, I have a hip injury, and so I can't run anymore. So that's personally something I can't, I used to be a big runner and I can't. So I've found things that work for me that don't aggravate my hip. And so there's, you know, people have like chronic knee pain or chronic, you know, shoulder pain, and they can't do certain exercises. And so also just have grace for yourself and know like, okay, maybe I can't do that particular thing, but there's other things that I can do. And so, so maybe just finding ways that you can move. And if you have restrictions with the doctor that you see, you know, if you're seeing an orthopedic doctor or a neuro, neuro, neurologist or um, neurosurgeon or whatever, or a PT, you know, you can always talk to them about what exercises they would recommend that are safe for you. Uh, because of course, with certain conditions, there are certain activities that may not be safe for everybody. So I just, that's an important thing probably for us to mention. No, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And you can start small. It doesn't mean you have to be perfect and go lift the heavy weights you see someone at the gym do, um, or at home, you know, like for example, push-ups. I have a patient, um, we started, she started with push-ups against the wall. Then she moved to push-ups on the counter. And, you know, it was really fun. She actually enjoyed whenever we met, like, guess how many push-ups I can do now on the counter? She's like, I can do 60. She goes, check out these guns. And I'm like, you go girl. <laughs> and this is, you know, it was just really fun to see someone have confidence in their own strength. So movement in the strength training is something we have neglected. We should be talking to our children about incorporating these type of things in their life to help prevent osteoporosis. It mm. keeps strength, flexibility, so many good things. You're more insulin sensitive. So absolutely. And, you know, just focusing in on that movement piece that you enjoy and making those small habits throughout the day um, is just critical. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. I think that was a wonderful discussion about exercise versus movement and the mindset we have around it and all the wonderful things we can do looking at it as an opportunity in our lives and how it can promote the best version of our future self. I love thinking mm -hmm. about that too. Yeah. It's like you're future proofing yourself. It's an mm -hmm. insurance. It's an, it's a way it's real health insurance as it were. Yeah, uh, you're loving yourself. In the yeah. um, um, any, any, Christina, any um, final thoughts, words you wanted to say to our audience as we're wrapping up here? Uh, I know I've kind of harped on it a lot, but finding things that bring you joy would be my biggest piece of advice. Because I used to be a big runner and I really didn't even like running, to be honest with you. And mm -hmm. once I found these other activities that brought me a lot more joy. I do it so much more consistently than I ever mm. did before. And so mm. that would just be my piece of advice. Like if you're waking up every day and running and you just hate it, like, or you're waking up and doing yoga and you just hate it, like, don't do it. Like do something else. Yeah. So that would yeah. be my biggest piece of advice. Yeah. The reality I, is if you yeah. hate it, you're probably not waking up every day and doing it. That's I'm the... <laughs> forcing myself to do it. And it's like, that's right. You can only force enjoy. yourself to do something for so long. Yeah. Right. right. And Dr. Lori, any, any closing thoughts you have? Yeah. And I would like to echo what she's saying. Cause Christine, it's, I really definitely agree with you that you have to do something that you enjoy because that's feeding that neurotransmitters, is that, that's that feedback. That's what's going to make this easier and easier versus beating yourself up. And that's where I find like with running, I prefer to run maybe three days a week versus every day, right? Because then it becomes more of a chore. And I do other things on those other days that still allow me to, to get, you know, the heart rate up and walk and build that distance endurance. And so Absolutely. Is it biking? Personally, I hate biking. The whole callousing in the butt just doesn't seem natural to me. I'm just saying that's not natural. <laughs> but for others, they're like, it is. My husband loves biking. He's like, we should go biking. I'm like, no, I'm good. <laughs> like, this is your time. He loves pickleball. 
oh, I'm good without it, you know? So no. I'm like, this is a time for you to socialize with people outside of this house. <laughs> so, you know, and it's okay to have different interests, but um, really, really fun. Okay, awesome. And I just want to thank all the people who tuned in, all the people who will watch this. Reminder, we are Mora Medical. We will help you achieve your goals, your health goals, your weight loss goals in a sustainable way with lifestyle changes, physician and physician assistant led lifestyle medicine groups. And you can find us at mora.com, M-O-R-A.com. Linda says, or Anne says, I recently discovered Dr. Lori while searching for plant-based guidance. I'm enjoying the recordings and happy I found the live stream. Oh, thank yeah. you for listening. Yeah. And remember, guys, we use insurance and there is a cash pay option if you need to. But uh, we just really want to make this as accessible to people as much as possible. So please share the website to your Facebook group or your Instagram or your friends or family who you think might resonate with this, because it really is an important piece is this understanding that our patients are our biggest advocates and they are really that's our referral service. So thank you, everyone. All right. Thank you all. I'll see you guys next week. All right. Have a great day, everyone.